Why? Because you're a living vampire that feeds off sex, so you have to have a bevy of lovers? I'd change it if I could, you know that. He came to me then, put his arms around my shoulders, and rested his cheek on the top of my head. I didn't mean to make you sad, Anita. God knows I didn't. Please, don't tell me you'd change it if you could. You love Nathaniel and Micah. They love you. You love Jean-Claude and Asher, and they love you. You're still a little confused about what to do with Damien, but you'll get there. <laughs> I shook my head and stood up, moving away from him. Don't forget Requiem and London and sometimes Richard. Oh, wait, and the Swan King pops in now and then, no pun intended. <laughs> It sounded angry and bitter and I was glad. I didn't mean to say the wrong thing. I didn't mean to make you feel bad or to have another woman mad at me tonight. Please, Anita, please don't be mad. I'm upset. You have no idea how upset. Please, please, I'm a bastard, but don't be mad. He held his hand out to me. His face pleaded along with his words. I'd never seen his eyes full of quite this kind of pain. The look in his eyes was more than just losing a girlfriend he didn't want anymore. I held out my hand but made him take the step to close our fingers around each other. His eyes glittered in the overhead lights. I took his hand, held it. His breath came out in a gasp, and then he was crying. I went to him, and he wrapped his arms around me as if he were at the edge of a cliff, and I was his only hand to hold. I held him back, tried to tell him it would be all right. I whispered it into his hair against his cheek. It's all right, Jason, it's all right. Nathaniel came up behind him and wrapped his arms around us both. He pressed his cheek against his friend's hair and said, We're here, Jason. We're here for you. We ended up on the floor of the kitchen, holding them until the tears began to slow. Somewhere in all of it, Nathaniel had fetched Kleenex, and there was a lot of them scattered around us like pale ghosts of wounded emotions. The three of us sat in a row with our backs to the kitchen island. Jason had his hand, head against Nathaniel's shoulder and a hand on my leg. His voice came flat, empty, as if all his emotion had been cried away. My father's dying of cancer. My mom called today just after Purdy and I broke up. I exchanged a glance with Nathaniel. His wide eyes let me know that it was news to him, too. Jesus, Jason, I'm sorry, I said. We hate each other, of course, and now the cold bastard's dying, and I won't have time to forgive him before he dies. What can we do? Nathaniel asked softly. He smiled, a little weak, a little watered down, but he managed it. I thought it was a good sign. I hoped it was. You really want to know? Name it, I said. He smiled again, but his eyes flinched as if I'd hit him instead of told him I'd do anything he wanted if it would take the pain away. Purdy isn't here to tell me don't, or to tell you don't. I'm a free man again. He tried for a laugh, but it was, sounded more like a sob. I get it, Nathaniel said. I frowned at him. Then explain it to me because I don't. He wants to have sex with you again. What? I said. <laughs> Purdy can't tell him no, or you no know anymore. You can be lovers again. You mean now, you, like now, right now? <laughs> Nathaniel gave a sh half shrug. Jason moved his head off the other man's shoulder. He dropped his hand away from my leg. It's okay, Anita. I fucked this up, too. I know this isn't the way to approach you, but my head is so ugly tonight. I just can't seem to think clearly. He pushed to his feet and started for the doorway. I opened my mouth to say, don't go, and yes. I closed it without saying any of it out loud and looked at Nathaniel. I frowned at him. He was more than just my sweetie. I was a sort of living vampire that fed off sex, but with the downsides came some interesting upsides. Nathaniel was my animal to call, which meant he was like my familiar. We shared emotions, power, and sometimes thoughts. You're projecting inside my head, aren't you? You can shut me out if you want, he said. Jason hesitated, just short of the doorway. He frowned at us both. I'm missing something. I looked into the face of a man that I loved. Is this really what you want? He's my friend. You know, most guys don't want their girlfriends to sleep with their friends. If you'd never slept with Jason, that would be different, but you have. Why is it wrong to sleep with him tonight? I opened my mouth to say something reasonable, then closed it, because for the life of me, I couldn't come up with a clear-headed answer. Why was it wrong to sleep with Jason tonight? Because I hadn't planned on it? Because it felt slutty? Were any of these reasons good reasons? Jason stopped in the doorway, caught between the light of the kitchen and the darkness of the living room beyond. I made you feel sorry for me. I'm not sure I want that to be your motivation for taking me to bed. Once upon a time, you wouldn't have cared why you got to sleep with me. I was a slut, I know. I didn't mean that, Jason. Stay here tonight, Nathaniel said. He half turned so he could see us, but his face was still mostly in shadow. Why? Why do you want me to stay? I shrugged at Nathaniel with the, this was your idea expression. Because you're our friend. Because we care about you. And you, Anita, what's your motivation? I looked up at him. There was something defiant about the set of his shoulders, as if he expected me to hurt him. I tried very hard not to do that. It just seems wrong for you to go walk out the door right now. Stay. If the sex is an issue, then just stay for a big puppy pile. We can actually just sleep. 
He shook his head. You never make me want to just sleep, Anita. That made me uncomfortable. I don't know what to say to that, Jason. Say you want me. I started to say something, but Nathaniel touched my hand. He needs the truth, Anita. And what is the truth, I asked, taking my hand away from his. Tell him how you feel, really feel about him. I took a deep breath and thought about the truth. What was the truth? You are one of the best friends I have, Jason, and you shouldn't be alone tonight. Jean-Claude would let me sleep with him, but you wouldn't let him hold you while you cry. How do you know I wouldn't? Call it a hunch. He stood frozen in the doorways if he couldn't decide, or as if part of him wanted to and part of him didn't. I'd made him come to me to hold his hand. Now I went to him. I wrapped my arms around him. He stayed stiff and unyielding. I pressed my head to his shoulder. Stay with us tonight, Jason, please. He whispered against my hair, why? Because you want to. Not good enough, he whispered. Because I can feel how much it would hurt Nathaniel to see you leave tonight and know that you didn't have anyone to hold you while you slept. It's not sleep I want, Anita. I'm afraid to sleep. I'm afraid I'll dream. Last night was bad. I lifted my face up to look at him. You found all this out last night? He nodded. Bad dreams? I made it a question. The worst. Something about the news about my dad just raked a lot of shit up. Nathaniel's knee pushed at me, almost staggering in his desire to have Jason stay. I tried to shield against him, but realized that one of the reasons I couldn't shield was that I agreed with him. A large part of me felt Jason should stay. Nathaniel was right. Jason was already on my list of lovers. Why was it wrong for me to admit that it was fun to sleep with Jason? Why was it always wrong for me to admit that I simply wanted to be with someone? Not because I had no choice, but because for once, I did. He kissed my forehead. I'll go home. I hugged him tighter, kept him in the doorway. It would be lovely if you stayed. He looked startled. You sound like you mean that. I nodded. I do. He smiled. It was a shadow of his usual one. Somewhere in there, did you actually say please? I smiled at him. I think I did. I've never heard you ask a man to please stay with you. I don't usually have to. Stay with us tonight, Nathaniel said. I nodded. Stay. The bed will be a little crowded when Micah gets home. He's out of town, I said. A new wear leopard wanted to join our part. He's off interviewing, Nathaniel said. Jason nodded. I like Micah. You know that. But he's not your best friend like Nathaniel is, and he's not a girl, I said. Jason nodded again. Tonight, I don't really want an audience. Damon is, Damon is even sleeping over with his latest vampire lover, Nathaniel said. We have the house to ourselves. Some tension I hadn't been aware of slid away from Jason. I love everybody, but sometimes the group thing gets a little old. It was one of the things I liked about Purdy at first. You don't want a group orgy every night, but you don't want to be monogamous either, Nathaniel said. Jason nodded. I am so fucked. <laughs> Not yet, I said, hugging him, but we can fix that. <laughs> he grinned at me and it reached his eyes. Bedroom, bathroom, living room, or kitchen. 